Alrighty folks, howdy and welcome back. And this is that major killer haul I was talking about. I do not know how long this is going to take, so just do what you can to sit back and enjoy this uh, massive book haul for the ages. Now this is obviously, because it's my channel, going to be predominantly nonfiction, but there is going to be some fiction in here for sure. But without further ado, let's get into all these books I got for birthday, Christmas, all, all that stuff. So, I'll start with these over here first. Uh, here is a collection of short stories, five long short stories by Lewis Bromfield. And this is from Avon, their Modern Short Story Monthly. And I got this at Vintage Books. And as I mentioned in my video before, I've been getting kind of a penchant for short stories. And I liked kind of the synopses for these. So here's that Lewis Bromfield collection. Next is a work of literary criticism, the Negro novelist from 1940 through 1950. And I'm sure you'll see some names on there that are pretty recognizable. For me, I recognized quite a few, but there were some on here that were new to me. So I think that'll be a fun way to discover some new to me authors. So this is the Negro novelist, and this is by Carl Milton Hughes. Next are two books or two plays by Tennessee Williams. The first here is A Streetcar Named Desire. Um, I tried to watch the movie, and I got about halfway through before I couldn't take it anymore. Uh, I think just the abusive nature of Stanley was just rough. But I will give it another go for sure. And the next one here by Tennessee Williams is Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Now, I've also seen the movie for this, and I absolutely loved it. It was really, really fun. And really absolutely intriguing, the drama of it all. So this is Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Next up here is uh, the first book in Anne Bannon's kind of Bebo Brinker books that she did. And this is Odd Girl Out. Now I had the Triangle Classics Omnibus, the complete Bebo Brinker Chronicles. But it molded on me, and it just was not salvageable. So I've been slowly but surely hunting around and looking for all the Bebo books, and I finally found the first one. So yay! <laughs> and next is a Library of America set, which, you know, has been a long time coming. I don't really get a lot of Library of America books because, one, they're really hard to find used and affordable around here. And two, their retail prices are just a little too out of reach for me. But I lucked out and was able to get this particular set. And this is an author who I've been wanting to read for a very long time. I've read one of his essay collections, but we got to do more. And so this is the James Baldwin Complete Essays and Fiction. And the first one here is Collected Essays, and the titles here, Notes of a Native Son, Nobody Knows My Name, The Fire Next Time, which is the one I've read, No Name in the Street, The Devil Finds Work, and 36 other essays. So that's going to be brilliant. Next here are early novels and stories, Go Tell It on the Mountain, Giovanni's Room, Another Country, and Going to Meet the Man. And lastly, our later novels, Tell Me How Long the Train's Been Gone, If Beale Street Could Talk, and Just Above My Head. So that is the three-volume set from Library of America of James Baldwin's work. So I'm hoping to make a pretty hefty dent this year into that collection. So now moving, ooh, don't fall, moving down to here, all these books, let's see. First off is another book I've been looking around for, used with no avail, and randomly while I was at Vintage Books, I saw this in their Black Studies section, and I about fainted, because I've never been able to find it, and especially online, it's not cheap. Uh, Angela Davis's uh, An Autobiography, 
Oh my god. You guys. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. This is definitely going to be something read this year. This I even put this on my, my must read or my reading guide for this year. Super duper stoked for this autobiography by Angela Davis. Next is a Pluto Press book I got during their sale. This is The Political Thought of Abdullah Oshalon. And he is uh, seen as kind of the prominent leader of the Kurdish Liberation Movement. And yeah, right here it says he led the Kurdish liberation struggle as the head of the PKK from its foundation in 1978 until his abduction in 1999. He is still regarded as a leading strategist and the most important political representative of the Kurdish people. Under isolation conditions at Imrali Island Prison, Oshalon authored more than 10 books. And this is kind of a more concise collection to understand his political thought. It's very hard to get his prison writings, not only because they're not printed on mass, not even close, but they're also pretty expensive. So I figured this would be a good alternative in the meantime to maybe save up and try and get some of those prison writings of his. So yes, this is the political thought of Abdullah Oshalon. Next book is one I've actually read before, but I've never owned. And this is Mamiya Abu Jamal's Have Black Lives Ever Mattered? And this was the first work of his I ever read. I saw it at my college library. They had it in their new releases section. And this got me absolutely enthralled, not only into his work, but also his life. And this comes highly recommended. It's a brilliant collection of short essays reporting about Black Lives Matter. And he has a brilliant refrain throughout this book, and it's this question. And the last essay, just wow. It still gives me chills even thinking about it. So this is Mumia Abu Jamal's Have Black Lives Ever Mattered? Next is a work of literary criticism, of which a subject I'm trying to get more and more into. It's starting to capture my interest a lot more than it ever had. And this is colonialism slash post-colonialism by Anya Lumba, The New Critical Idiom. And this is through Rutledge. And this examines exactly what the title says. And this is a subject I'm obviously wanting to learn more about. It's definitely a weak part for me. So we got to get started somewhere. And I figured that this would be pretty helpful. So this is colonialism slash post-colonialism. Uh, Walter Benjamin this is a work of his, is a writer who I've been wanting to discover for quite some time. And I've been seeing numerous posts on Bookstagram talking about him, so I've been taking it as a sign. And so I picked up his work, Illuminations, Essays, and Reflections. And this is edited and with an introduction by Hannah Arndt. So I'm super stoked for this. Um, I don't have very much to say because I'm very, very new to Walter Benjamin, but this should be fun. Now, moving on here, we have Writers in, Prisons, uh, Writers in Prison by Davies. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say that first name there. But this is like a collection of prison writings, which we all know on this channel is something I've been really getting into lately. So I saw this at Vintage Books and thought I had to have it. <laughs> Next up, oh... Oh, this is going to be good, especially since I'm currently reading her poetry right now. This is uh, Audre Lorde's Sister Outsider, a collection of essays and speeches. And I have this in an omnibus, but the omnibus is slowly but surely falling apart. And I got this for like three bucks, and it's usually not that cheap ever. So I was very stoked to get this. You know, I have a hard time with omnibuses sometimes, and some works... I prefer to have kind of individually. So this was wonderful to just find on a whim at a goodwill yesterday. So this is Audre Lorde's Sister Outsider. This is one I saw also at Goodwill and I almost picked up a few weeks ago, but wasn't able to afford it at the time. And when I went back yesterday, it was still there and half off. So this is a work from Rutledge. This is The Psychology of Terrorism by John Horgan. Uh, I read a lot about terrorism. It's a subject that is 
important to me and is fascinating as much as you can say it's fascinating. But uh, yeah, stuff about political violence definitely is something I always enjoy learning more about. So I was very excited to get this for as cheap as I did. So this is the psychology of terrorism. Next, and this one was also when I found at Vintage Books, uh, along with that Writers in Prison book. This is the first, an first anthology of literature written in prison. This is The Great Prisoners. And there's a ton of people in here, <laughs> like a lot. And this is selected and edited by Isidore Abramovitz. I'm hoping I am say saying that correctly. So, woof. Yeah, from the journals, confessions, trials, letters, fables, philosophy, satires, inquiries, manifestos, poetry, and other prison writings and records of all of these people down here. You might want to pause this or something. I hope the picture's clear enough. But yeah, it's a pretty hefty anthology. And it was very... It's a nice condition for me. I mean, I was surprised. And the really great dust jacket on here to keep it from falling apart. Because you can see it's already losing parts. So yeah, the first anthology of literature written in prison. Alright, moving on. We have another hefty one. Which has been on my my sites for a little while. And this is The Age of Surveillance Capitalism. The Fight for a Human Future at the New Frontier of Power by Soshana Zuboff. And I hope I'm saying that correct. But yeah, and there was quite some controversy too uh, on Twitter when former President Barack Obama put this on his favorite books of 2019 list. <laughs> I won't go into it here, but zoink Scoob. That's all I can say. But this is, oh, ooh, hits me right in the chest with how uh, relevant how needed this subject matter is, and I'm super excited to see what she has to say. And she has quite a few words to say, <laughs> all right? And, uh, whoa. So this is the age of surveillance capitalism. Next up is Nicholas Bukala's The Fire is Upon Us, James Baldwin, William F. Buckley Jr., and the debate over race in America. And I had watched... The documentary, I Am Not Your Negro, which was about James Baldwin coming back to the United States to document and witness what was going on in the civil rights movement. And there was a little bit of a section about this particular debate. And I believe that you could find this debate in its entirety on YouTube. But essentially, this took place at Cambridge University. The topic was the, the American dream is at the expense of the American Negro. And wow, <laughs> a really fascinating debate. Um, clearly, in my opinion, and from the student body at Cambridge, they felt that Baldwin really won this one out. But I'm excited to look at the depth that Bukala provides into this debate and these two thinkers of that time and the context in which this had occurred. So, you know, I read the Boston Review article on this, and this absolutely just heightened my already keen interest into this book. So this is Bukala's The Fire Is Upon Us. Another hardcover here. Uh, this is Edward Snowden's memoir, Permanent Record. And, you know, this is extremely controversial. I may be wrong about this, but I thought I had heard or read that the U.S. government is opening a lawsuit against him for writing this, and they're trying to censor this book being out. I could be completely wrong, but it wouldn't be that far-fetched if true. But yeah, I'm very interested in Edward Snowden's story and just whistleblowers in general. So him, Chelsea Manning, Daniel Ellsberg, that whole shebang. So... I had to get this one. So this is Edward Snowden's permanent record. Uh, one work of fiction here <laughs> in this sea of uh, nonfiction we've been through is Cherry, 
a novel by Nico Walker. And, you know, I had seen this around. I think I had seen Steve talk about it when he was getting it for review, however long ago. And, you know, I really didn't think that much of it. But I was listening to one of my favorite podcasts, uh, The Nostalgia Trap, hosted by David Parsons. And he had a guest on there, and they were talking about this book briefly. And how this kind of, to them, represents possibly a new canon in war fiction. And they kind of compared it to Tim O'Brien's The Things They Carried. And that made me uh, put this on my radar pretty immediately. Because war fiction is something I'm also really wanting to get into this year. So to not only read this or The Things They Carried, but also works like Catch-22, Johnny Got His Gun, and the like. So this is Cherry by Nico Walker. Now we're moving into some Verso books. First one here is part of Verso series Radical Thinkers. And this is Judith Butler's Frames of War, When is Life Grievable? In this urgent response to violence, racism, and increasingly aggressive methods of coercion, Judith Butler explores the media's portrayal of armed conflict, a process integral to how the West prosecutes its wars. In doing so, she calls for a reconceptualization of the left one united in opposition and resistance to the intelligence and arbitrary effects of interventionist, of interventionist military action. And uh, if you've been seeing the news recently with our attack on Iran, it's very unfortunate that this uh, work like this has come back into extreme relevancy and into the fore. So this is certainly something to get to for me much sooner rather than later. So this is Judith Butler's Frames of War, When is Life Grievable? Another work of Butler, which is in the same vein as the previous one here, is Precarious Life, The Powers of Mourning and Violence. Uh, in her most impassioned and personal book to date, Butler responds in this profound appraisal of the post-9-11 of post-9-11 America to the current U.S. policies to wage perpetual war and calls for a deeper understanding of how mourning and violence might, might instead inspire solidarity in a quest for global justice. So this is precarious lives. The, power, uh, the Powers of Mourning and Violence by Judith Butler. Also, sorry, I'm losing my ability to speak now. So bear with me. We're getting there. Next up is another collection from Verso. This is their Revolution series where they have like contemporary radical thinkers present works uh, by past revolutionaries. So, sorry if I say this wrong, but Slavo Žižek presents Mao's On Practice and Contradiction. And Red Menace, a podcast I've referenced a few times on this channel, they read these primary texts and then do analysis. And they had a f an episode or two about Mao's on practice and contradiction. So I was very excited to see that Verso had it and that it was part of their sale when they had that going on. So this is Zizek Presents Mao's On Practice and Contradiction from Verso's Revolution series. Next up is Our History is the Future, Standing Rock versus the Dakota Access Pipeline and the Long Tradition of Indigenous Resistance by Nick Estes. And he also has a podcast called the Red Nation Podcast, which looks at politics, current affairs, and all those types of issues from an indigenous lens, which is extremely lacking in our political discourse. And it's a podcast I couldn't recommend enough. He is a professor of American history, and I'm very, very excited to see uh, his analysis in here. I've heard nothing but wonderful reviews for this. So uh, this comes highly anticipated. So this is Nick Estes' Our History is the Future. Last of the Verso books, at least for a while, is a book I've been wanting since it came out in 2017. I had listened to the radio show This Is Hell, and they had interviewed several contributors and the editors for this work. And this is Futures of Black Radicalism. And this is in reference to, I believe, Cedric Robinson's book, Black Radicalism. And this builds upon that work by him 
and looking to the future. So we got a ton of contributors in here. Um, Daryl C. Thomas, Cedric J. Robinson, Kwame M. Phillips, Robin D.G. Kelly, Angela Davis, and several, several others. So this is Futures of Black Radicalism, edited by Gay Teresa Johnson and Alex Lubin. Another Pluto Press book. This is Red Star Over the Third World by Vijay Prashad. And this looks at revolutions from the third world. So from Cuba to Vietnam, from China to South Africa, the October Revolution inspired millions of people beyond Russia. And this looks at the ripple effect of the October Revolution. So this should be exciting. The only complaint I've heard from somebody I follow on Instagram is that it is in ways far too short. So we shall see, but I'm still nonetheless excited for this. Next up is In the Spirit of Crazy Horse, the story of Leonard Pelter and the FBI's war on the American Indian movement by Peter Matheson. And I also have the prison writings of Leonard Pelter. It's subtitle is My Life is a Sundance. So I feel like reading these back to back will be really great. And maybe even including the chapters from the book Agents of Repression, looking at how the government targeted the American Indian movement. So this is in the spirit of Crazy Horse by Peter Matheson. And we were just talking about him from Pluto Press. This is Cedric J. Robinson on racial capitalism, black internationalism, and cultures of resistance. And this is edited by HLT Kwan with a foreword by Ruth Wilson Gilmore. So I've seen Cedric J. Robinson cited several times in my reading and articles and stuff like that, but I haven't actually read a full anything of his work. So I thought, well, here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> so this is uh, Cedric J. Robinson's work. Next up is this Hummer, and I didn't believe it when Barnes & Noble put 50% off on this, but this is Sontag, Her Life and Work by Benjamin Moser. And Susan Sontag is like an enigma to me. I've seen so many people, not only on BookTube, but also on Bookstagram and all this stuff talk about Susan Sontag's work, how uh, pinnacle and influential it was. And, you know, I've known of Susan Sontag for quite a long time. She's come across in my school's curriculum and whatnot. But, you know, there's really not that much I know about her life. And, you know, I only know really brief synopses of her work. I haven't really read any of it. So, and we're going to get to that in a minute. <laughs> but this biography looked absolutely intriguing. I would also love to get the Sigrid Nunez work about her and get to Sontag's actual work itself. So this is the new biography about her, and I'm very excited. Uh, another memoir, can you tell I'm starting to really get into this genre, is Edward Said's Out of Place. Um, I've talked about Edward Said a hundred trillion billion times on this channel, so it seems pretty inevitable that I would eventually get to this one. So this is his memoir, Out of Place. Uh, this is Che Guevara's Our America and Theirs, Kennedy and the Alliance for Progress, The Debate at Punta del Este. So, you know, I have the, I think I have the Che Guevara reader, but sometimes I like to get, like I mentioned before, kind of these individual ones. So this looks really fascinating. Okay, guys, these next two are books I've been looking for for more than a hot minute. And I mean, it was just absolutely impossible to find them anywhere that was affordable. And what do you know? I walk into Powell's, I go to the Black Studies section, and there they are right next to each other. The two books I've been, that have been my god tier to find. First here is Black Against Empire, the history and politics of the Black Panther Party by Joshua Bloom and Waldo E. Martin Jr. with a new preface from the University of California Press. You guys, I think I was like hyperventilating. I'm almost hyperventilating now thinking about this. Holy shit. I've been seeing this everywhere, 
and I've been wanting it and it's never been in within my reach and I finally was able to get it. So, oh God, I'm like sweating. So this is Black Against Empire. Holy shit. So great. And oh, I've read about a thousand excerpts out of this in my women's studies and sociology classes, but I've never been able to find the full work. And this is Patricia Hill Collins's Black Feminist Thought, Knowledge, Consciousness, and the Politics of Empowerment, the second edition. I'm so excited. I don't even care that the cover is like living on a prayer here. Whew. This has been a must need for me for God knows how long. And I'm just so glad I finally found it. Because I've been looking in Powell's for years for this and never have come across it. So thank God the stars were aligned yesterday for me. So this is Patricia Hill Collins's Black Feminist Thought. Woo. Okay, we're coming back down now and we're in the home stretch. So this again was in the literary criticism aisle and this is Terry Eagleton's Ideology and Introduction. And I've been seeing a lot of stuff by Terry Eagleton around, but I've never read him. And I read the back of this and this seemed absolutely enticing. So I picked up this one, Ideology and Introduction. Now we're getting into the Susan Sontag stuff. So I was talking about, you know, wanting to read about her life and all that stuff. But then I also need to read her work. So I got a few things. First one, probably one of her most popular is On Photography. Next, Against Interpretation and Other Essays. And then her journals. So this is Reborn, Journals and Notebooks, 1947 to 1963. And As Consciousness is Harnessed to Flesh, Journals and Notebooks, 1964 to 1980. And I think I was reading somewhere that these journals are going to be a three-volume set. But I think just the two are out. We're still waiting for the third to be published. Uh, if I'm wrong, please tell me so I can hunt down that third one. But yeah, so I got these first two out of three. Now moving on to Fanon. Two years ago, I had bought this book, but didn't notice that it was just riddled with notes in pen. And really badly, too. Like, it was every sentence was underlined. And I personally can't stand that. I prefer my books that I'm going to take notes in to be blank. So I rebought this because it was affordable enough. It wasn't, you know, an arm and a leg. But this is Fanon's uh, Black Skin, White Masks. And a new edition translated from the French by Richard Philcox with a foreword by Kwame Anthony Apaya. So there that is. And we may have seen these a few times on this channel, but I love these for beginners books. I read one on Marx's Capital and one on Lenin. And I found this one, Mao, for beginners. Um, I looked in their Chinese history section. They didn't have very much of Mao's own writing. They had a lot of works about Mao. But I'm trying to find his writings. And so I'm going to have to do some searching around online. I know I can find them like on the Marx's archive. But I like to have them in book format. But this will work so I kind of get a little bit more of an introductory idea of Mao, his place in history, and his life's legacy. So that's Mao for Beginners, and this is by Ruiz and Friends. Another Verso book, this is Benedict Anderson's Imagined Communities. Its subtitle is Reflection, Reflections on the Origin and Spread of Nationalism, and this is a revised edition. So that's all the subtitle I had to say for me to be hooked. So this is Imagined Communities. And the last one, finally, God, is one I've been wanting since it came out. This is Blood in the Water, The Attica Prison Uprising of 1971 and its Legacy by Heather Ann Thompson. And this won the Pulitzer Prize. So, wow. Wow. And I've heard a lot of great things about this from numerous people, from cultural critics, literary critics, uh, to folks I follow on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. So I had to pick it up. And this is Blood in the Water. And, woo! We survived. 
Thank you so much, guys, for sticking around for this absolutely asinine book haul. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I just absolutely obliterated your TBRs for, like, the next few months. And I'm excited to see what your comments are all are, so I, I can't talk anymore. I've, I've absolutely done myself in for the rest of the day. So until next time, thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Bye.